All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over a story titled, Am I the A-hole for yelling at my parents that their polyamory effed up my childhood? And big shout out to Ash for sending me this article or story. And uh, guys, this is all about a young guy who pretty much tells the story of how growing up his parents had an open marriage, polyamory relationship, whatever you want to call it where often he would see their lovers showing up at his house when he was a little kid, amongst many other things that no little kid should ever have to observe and experience ever. And to no surprise, it left him a little messed up. And I'm doing this, guys, to show you how we're right now we are truly in Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0 with open marriages and open relationships and plenty of other things I don't even need to mention. And of all the stories I've done in this channel, both stories I came across, people, stories that you guys sent me, these things are just a recipe for disaster. The only time these things work is if both parties are 100% on board of this. And in my opinion, obviously, no kids. And I think that, honestly, if, if somebody's going to get married to someone, then why are they getting having to have an open marriage, open relationship, all that? Then what the hell's the point, Right. And so many stories you hear about how it's the women that bring these things up in the marriage. They're married for 10 years, 20 years. She's bored, wants validation, so she wants to have an open marriage. The guy's too weak to say no, afraid that she'll leave him. So he goes along with it, and it's a, it completely destroys the relationship. It's done. And no one ever talks about the impact it has on kids. And you're going to see here firsthand the impact it had on this young guy. So this is why I say so many times, I don't think this is a good idea at all. Some people could say I'm a stick up, stick up my butt conservative, but hey, it is what it is. But it goes to show you, and, and, and this is unfortunate the direction that things are going until probably things get a little too much, you know. So anyhow, guys, this is an interesting one here. But as you're going to see here, it doesn't really work out very well for the parents. Starts off says I believe it started when I was about six years old. Six years old. My parents often had friends over in the house. I didn't know they were polyamorous. One day, I was outside playing, got hurt, and when I ran inside, I caught my parents making out with some random guy. Imagine that. They told me they have other they have other adults that they love, and it's a completely normal thing. Me being a child just accepted that. That's the thing about growing up. Your parents tell you this is normal. You think, okay, mom and dad are always right. See what I'm talking about, guys? Right then and there, mom and dad are so damn selfish. If they're going to do that thing, okay, fine. Maybe a weekend out meeting these friends at a hotel or somebody else's house where there's no kids involved. But doing this there, he's out playing in the backyard, gets hurt, comes in and sees mom, mom and dad making out with some other dude. Oh, they're just friends. You're going to completely screw this kid up for relationships and bonding with people later in life because his biggest example, look what they're doing. Anyway. I'm in the mood, it's, it's 9 in the morning, I'm in the mood to vent this morning, so you're going to get more commentary from me about this particular thing than usual, so just get used to it. Get ready for it. He says, they gave up being secretive, and their, and their partners would constantly be around, even joining on outings. This is his house, this is his family. What kind of example are you setting for your kid, having your friends over and joining on outings? Selfish assholes. That's what they are, these parents. I remember that on my 10th birthday, they invited three of their partners, one of whom I've never seen before, and for the rest of the day, my parents just withdrew from the party and hung out with them. His birthday party? I never saw them doing anything explicit again, but they would kiss their partners, hug them, and make flirty comments. Something that would, norm that would be normal between parents, but with many more people. Sometimes I came home from school and my parents were gone and there was some random adult in my, over in my house some of, and some of them seemed surprised that my parents even had a child. Unbelievable. He comes home from school and there's, the parents aren't there but their friends are there at the house. You know, you put this all together and in my opinion, this is the, I don't know how social services didn't get involved or they kept it so quiet. But I have a hard time imagining other people that weren't into this lifestyle didn't catch on what was going on. Or the kid, when he was younger, uh, mentioned something in passing about this that would have an adult in the family be like, huh? Seriously. Anybody that works happens to work in uh, social services that's watching this, let me hear your take on this. Or anybody that work, does family law, any of you guys out there, let me, let me know, would, these, would this be grounds for uh, social services to get involved? I, I am very curious. Anyhow... 
I always hated it, but since my parents had told me this was normal, I assume many adults probably did similar things, and that's just an adult thing that all kids hate. Later on, they had less partners and eventually seemed to stop. Not that I knew for sure, but I moved out when I was 17. I didn't think about it anymore. So he got the hell out of there at 17 years old because he couldn't take it anymore. And notice he said they seemed to stop. Well, probably because, guess what? They're getting old. Their looks are fading, especially... Well, what I'm putting together here is mom's looks were fading cause, because, as the saying goes, men men age like Sean Connery and women age like Sean Connery. So her looks are fading. So she less dudes were into her. So she said, okay, we're done with the open marriage, husband. He, of course, goes along with that. That's what I put together. But 17, he moved out because of this shit. He says, I didn't think about it anymore. A year later, I started therapy, and he said, for other reasons. Any, any surprise there? The dude's in therapy at 18 years old. As usual, the topic of my upbringing came up, and it brought back many feelings I wasn't aware of. I realized that although my parents were always good to me, I had never really felt close to any of them, and they still, and still have a lot of resentment that they made me feel like I had to compete for my parents' attention with random strangers. What a bunch of selfish assholes. Now, he didn't mention if he has any siblings. I, I, I hope not. I wouldn't want to hear that these parents screwed, screwed uh, any other kids up. But, again, back to the thing. If they were going to do this lifestyle, which I disagree with, at the very least, don't do it in the house. Don't let your kids see it. Don't let them observe it. I mean, come on here. A while ago, I visited them, and they told me they are going to take part in a documentary about the polyamorous families and that the producers would like to include interviews with the children. So they would love if I could uh, could agree and tell everyone that polyam- polyamory doesn't mess kids up. I, if I was that kid, I'd be there like, okay, mom and dad, sure. Come, come have them interview me. I'll tell them exactly what I think. All my resentment bubbled up and I said I cannot agree because I would not be able to say anything positive. My parents looked shocked. I never brought this up before and asked why, and I unloaded it all. That I always felt pushed aside, we barely had any family time without strangers intruding, it turned into an argument, and I became loud and yelled the truth. It is, uh, I, I yelled that the truth is that it did F me up, and they should have had a child if their number one priority was effing the entire world. <laughs> that took guts for this kid to say this. I, I have a lot of respect for him. He obviously, he's 18, 19 years old. Yeah, if they're going to do this, don't have a kid. And I guarantee you they were probably thinking, oh, well, since he never brought it up, well, then he must have been okay with it. No, because he was a kid. It was awkward, amongst many other things. My mother cried, big surprise there, and my father said I should probably leave. So I left and was shaken up for the rest of the week, but I also felt regret because I never made my mom cry before. The, the, the crocodile tears, they can whip out tears like that. Well, she should cry. Because she was a 50% participant in this. They messed up their kid. Crying is the, the, the small little sacrifice thing that she had. Small penance that she has to go through because of this. You think this guy's going to have an easy time relating to other people and relationships and all that? Now, now we can all joke, well, maybe that's a good thing. But, but the point is, is that they messed this young kid up. It's not his fault. All because they were selfish and had to hook up. Again, they could have done it at hotels or somebody else's house, but no, they had to do it right there in the kid's face. Probably because they felt this is how things should be, so therefore our son, our child should observe this. Destruction of the nuclear family. I wasn't kidding when I said we're in Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0. So I left and was shaking up the rest of the week, blah, blah, blah. Uh, later, my father sent me a message that was was like, we are sorry you feel that way. We can have a calm discussion about this soon. That's not an apology. He's saying, we're sorry you feel this way, but we're not actually apologizing for doing all this shit in front of you as a kid and and so on and so forth. Even though I tried to, excuse me, guys. Even though I tried to, it's like I can't reply. This argument brought something very emotional up in me. Am I the a-hole for hurting my parents over this, especially since I have never brought it up before? No, bro, not at all. They're the a-holes. Again, if they were going to live this lifestyle, they should have not either not had a kid, or at the very least, did it somebody else's house. But in my opinion, look, if you're going to be, if you're actually going to get married together, 
and you're going to have a family that has some freaking traditional values for God's sakes, okay? Instead of being so selfish and messing the kids up. This guy's messed up. You think he's going to be able to have a decent relationship with anybody ever? Okay, and, but or maybe he'll be on the flip side where he will definitely rush. He may, he actually may rush to meet a girl, settle down with her too quick, have a bunch of kids, in a way to make up for what he lost in a childhood, and and by him going to, rushing too fast into this, can end up having a miserable life for himself if he can actually connect to her. Okay, he may marry the wrong girl too quickly. He may put up a whole bunch of her crap just to have a family because he didn't have one growing up. When and of course, when you put put up a woman's crap and put her on a pedestal, she's gonna treat you like shit and cheat and all that. We all know this. There'll be no balance, no harmony. No, he's not the a hole. He never a right to say that. And again, no surprise, he got the hell out of the house, at seventeen years old. <clears throat> Especially in today's world, where it seems like kids may at best go off to college for a few years and they're right back home living with mom and dad into their early thirties. This guy, I'm out of here. He probably been having to live in his car. To live underneath a bridge to have to live in that crazy household. No. Now, I have a few co comments from the comment section I'm going to share with you guys. One guy says, uh, not the a-hole. Do not back down and allow them to get you to recant. Notice that they said, we're sorry you feel this way, not we're sorry for doing X, Y, Z. Right, that's what I said. They gave you a non-apology for making your childhood basically a wallflower to an orgy, no less. This blew up like Coke on and Mentos. Thank, thank you, kind strangers. Right, exactly. They didn't apologize. Because in their view, hey, they think this is how things should be. So therefore, they raised their kid in it. Because believe me, they really cared about him. They, they would have made sure he didn't see any of this. Another guy says, the non-apology is cruel. They want to control the narrative here, especially given that they are taking part in a documentary. Their house of cards is tumbling down before their eyes. They are proud of their lifestyle, and their ignorant, happy bubble just popped. Right. Exactly. I, To be honest with you, if, if, if they weren't sincere about trying to work it out with this kid, I would walk away. Move the hell on. They're selfish assholes. He goes on, he says, I mean what... I." I mean, what the hell? I mean, what the hell? They left strangers for the for the kid to find a home. You don't know what, what you don't know that their partners had a kid. Didn't even give anyone a heads up. It's just reckless and piss poor parenting. It's entirely self absorbed. Their relationship took priority over their child. It was neglectful. Right. That's why I'm curious again if anybody that does practices family law or is in social services or has any knowledge about this. What's your opinion on this? Please comment in the comment section. What could have happened? Would social services get involved? Could they? Would it be warranted for them to get involved? The family courts and all that? I think they could have. The kids observing all this, coming home and seeing some random strangers in the house. You know, you you don't know what those strangers could have done to the kid. Seriously. He goes on and says, I think it might be good for the OP, original poster, to take some space, talk to the therapist, and maybe people the people they trust to figure out how to best address this. This was never a healthy family relationship, and the guy is in a precarious moment in, in their life. Just unload his true feelings for the first time and feeling very raw, and can be ganged up on a family discussion with an agenda looming. Reinforce your feelings. They're valid. Only address them when you're when you're prepared. I would I would make it clear I want, I want nothing to do with the documentary unless you can be honest about how damaging the lifestyle was. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not a true documentary. If, if everybody's saying the same thing, him going in there and saying, no, this completely screwed me up, blah, blah, blah. But then again, probably for legal reasons, they wouldn't want uh, the kid sharing the story about how he walked in to the house and mom and dad weren't there and there was some random stranger in the house. That probably wouldn't go too well. But anyhow, and he says, not the a-hole. Take care of yourself. Time to prioritize your own well-being. Right. Guys, you got to take care of yourself in this world. And, and as I've talked about this before, how, you know, a lot of people will, will they'll be strong and not tolerate any BS and crap from other women, from friends, from coworkers, random strangers, but they'll have a weakness for family. The old uh, blood is thicker than water or the bonds of family or some shit like that. Well, oftentimes it's family that can screw you up the most. The family that will take advantage of you, screw you out of money, screw you out of all these other things. So you have to have the same, in a way, hard-ass attitude and not take any shit attitude even with family. And so if you've got toxic family members, it is your, it's the best thing to distance yourself. You know, a lot of people, their friendships in life, the friends become their family compared to their actual blood relatives because of all sorts of crazy shit. 
it's amazing to me what I hear, the stories I hear, not just here from this channel and the stories you guys share, but just throughout my life, people I've known, they talk about their messed up families. And it's like, why do you have anything to do with them? Oh, it's my sister. Oh, it's my dad. Oh, it's my brother. So, they're all going to die one day just like everybody else. They're bringing you down. They're bringing misery to your life. You guys got to really think about that. This channel... I started this channel for a lot of reasons, guys, but one of many reasons to help guys out and, and bring up real situations, real scenarios to help guys not get into them or get out of bad situations when they hear other people's, what they go through. Life's too short, guys. Don't let, let, don't let people bring their shit into your life and bring you down. Look what the family's doing to this kid. And the last person says, not the a-hole. Upside, your parents seem to be... Uh, a-holes through obliviousness and neglect and might might be open to apologizing and trying to fix what they can. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe message your dad that you're not in place to talk to them at the moment and we'll get back to them and then talk to your therapist and develop a time frame, a timeline for when and how you can talk. As to not bringing it up before, parents do not get the luxury of assuming everything is okay because the kid never complained. Right. Parents have to ask, they have to check, and they have to find ways of communicating. If the kid can't talk to them, your parents screwed up. Kids cannot be expected to know something is wrong or know how to communicate it. Absolutely. Now, don't get me wrong. Parent, I'm not a parent. At least I don't think I am. But I know parenting is very difficult. There are things that my parents did growing up that just made me crazy at the time. And I, and I later on as an adult realized... Parents don't have all the answers. There's endless books written out there to help parents and guide them. But at the end of the day, every situation is different. So parents make mistakes. But those are those mistakes are small compared to this one. In my opinion, I think that's the lifestyle they wanted. They felt this is the way things should be. And therefore, they're going to have it right out in the open for their own kid to be. That's what I think was really going on. So if I'm this kid, I would just keep my distance from these people for a long time. I would definitely, I think therapy is certainly warranted to help work out a lot of shit that's going on. Because this guy, he's messed up as it is, and it's going to be, okay? I don't want him to get any more messed up than, than is necessary. And then eventually, when the time comes, if he wants this, he's going to sit down and have it out with the parents, okay? In an adult manner. And at that point in time, after dis after time has gone by, when they see, obviously, they're not, he's not talking to them, if then they still pull the, I'm sorry you feel that way crap, and basically don't apologize at, when he brings up all these things, and try to see that they were in the wrong, I would just be like, all right, mom and dad, the sausage fest was more important to you than me, so I'm out of here. Best of luck. You screwed me up. I'm going to do whatever I can to repair that and have a great life. Adios. And by the way, you're old, so good luck uh, attracting the same people you once did. Hope it was worth it. And be done. It sounds harsh. I sound like a hard ass, but I think many people that follow me here would agree with me in that, my opinion on that. That's what I would do. So, but anyhow, guys, I did this again to show how this this world we're in right now, Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0, with open marriages, open relationships, open this, open that, amongst many other things. It's not going so well. I've always talked about then stories how mess it destroyed marriages and all that, but now you're seeing the impact it has on the kids. So hopefully this will get out there. Maybe someone might come across this and maybe thinking about that and realize, you know what? Maybe it's not a very good idea. So anyhow, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Guys, let me know again back to you. Uh, any potential lawyers, family lawyers, people in the uh, the social work? Let me know about this. What, what, what I told you, what I read in the story about the kid and all that. I want to hear your take on that. And also, guys, if you happen to ever know anybody that that lived this lifestyle, share in the comment section. I'll I'll I'll, I'll catch it. I like to read that, and it'll help other guys as well. So, all right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. I said that part, and be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.